Alright guys, uh, in this tutorial we'll be digging more into the actual code and how to connect various aspects of the UI and change settings, all that sort of thing. So um, let's go back to again our, our main here and this is all stuff that I'm importing um, for that is uh, not de uh, Qt dependent it's just uh, what the program has to actually do. So um, again this is just setting up a config file for my program because it stores uh, configurations. Um, that's WMI uh, since I will be using Wind this is a Windows only application and so essentially once again all of that is not that important so our main thing is window equals main screen which goes up to our main screen right there and this is our init right here so it's going to initialize it right here um, and again this is just code this it's going to do when it initializes the window so essentially I'm making sure that the program is running as admin since it requires admin rights um, so it's going to try and see if I'm admin if I'm not then it's going to throw up a window another window um, air window um, and that equals error screen and self the error window show so it's showing an error screen right there and then it's going to kill the application so else it's going to print users admin and right now that just prints out to the console I should develop a log um, function that will print it out to an actual log file so um, so that's what that's doing that's why it has to be in the init of main screen so I'm checking it right before I call the main screen so if all this passes, it's great. And now it's going to go on and fill. I'm right. I'm using WMI to get the name, the nicknames, and I, I've already stored them to a list. And I'm going to um, add that to a drop down. So if we go to our design here, this is an actual drop down right here, a combo box, I should say. So and you can add the values in here, you know, right there. But I, I'm not going to do that because I need them to be dynamically generated. <clears throat> So, and that's the usual drop down box you see. So, if we go back into here, now um, qt GUI dot q combo box, and says combo box, we're going to do dot add items, um, and then we're going to tell it what um, combo box we're talking about if we have multiple ones. Um, and even if it's a single one, you have to select the one that we're populating, and then what we're going to populate it with. And now we're choosing self dot adapter selector. And you find that in here. It's going to be in the actual. Let's go ahead and find it. There it is, right there. So we're going to find it in the main screen.py. And of course, I usually just look at it in here because it's so much easier. And you can see adapter selector right there. So as you can see, self adapter selector is all you need to do, and that tells um, the program that we're talking about this combo box right here. So again, qtgui.qcombobox.addItems. And again, you'll find that in their documentation. Uh, let me pull that up a quick second. All right, and there that is. See qcombobox right here. Then you can see all of the functions um, available to you there. Um, so then you just have to look and see what you what you uh, what you think works. I chose add items because you're uh, you're choosing self and then Q string list. So click here and then it's just you need a list to to give it. So we've already created the nicknames L list uh, at our beginning thing here. Nicknames L equals list and then we're appending if we find the certain adapters we're appending those to the list. So it already has a list to throw on there. Alright, so that'll populate the drop-down box with our list. Next, uh, we're setting up the certain buttons on there on our thing here. You notice we have an exit button right there. And now that's <laughs> poorly named um, self.push button 9, which if we go back here, click on this, it's push button 9. Uh, if I wanted to make it better, I would name it exit button or something like that. But we're going to do self dot push button nine dot click. So we're saying what action has been performed there, and then dot connect, and then self dot close. And uh, one useful thing 
to notice if um, if you're trying to find out exactly well where do I find out where clicked is or connect or stuff like that let's go back to your Qt designer and take a look at this right here and look at it is a Q push button so if we go to the documentation and if we go to uh, Q push button reference here in the Qt GUI module as you can see so um, that's uh, Qt GUI um, though it's not called for this one but let's open that up and then you can see there is clicked pressed and released um, so then you can see that there's a clicked there's the pressed released and toggled so but we just needed to clicked so clicked dot connect self dot close um, and then self.label update is where we update any of the labels that might have changed um, that is there it is label update that just reads our config and make sure any of the labels that uh, have been set are reset so um, next we're going to uh, we have a set DHCP button right here uh, we're going to code that and so self.setdhcp which again we found from there is the object name again since it's a it's a q push button as well um, q push button right there um, we do dot click dot connect self dot set adapter dhcp and you will notice that set adapter dhcp is a um, is a function that you call so that's usually the uh, way things work um, you choose um, once you click once you find it's clicked you connect and you choose a function to call so but now we're on to um, a little bit something a little bit more complicated and that's set button one all of our set buttons here I have one two three four five set buttons and I don't want to code all separate functions for each one of those so you want to send an actual variable with it because it knows that it's set button one set button two set button three so you want to send the one two or three with it so um, so usually if you had just done this set DHCP and you wanted to pass a value on you know, one or something like that it would fail so you need to actually do when we're connecting to self button one click connect we're doing lambda and then colon then self dot set button one and that just tells the set button function uh, what number it is so and that's fairly self-explanatory add a button is the same way now when we're calling another window uh, we have an edit window here that gets a little bit tricky um, so when we click the edit button we want to call the uh, edit button um, function and we're also going to self dot edit window equals none but let's go to our edit button alright and I think I probably have one too many of these. I probably just need the self edit window here instead of up top. But self edit window equals none. And then uh, the edit button number I did global so that it would it would know what edit button was getting getting clicked. Um, and then just assigning that back. If self edit window is none. If edit screen is not already showing, which we set it to none here, so means it shouldn't be showing self dot edit window equals edit screen self that creates our edit window from our class edit screen which is right here and then of course self dot edit window dot show and then this line is very important um, that connects the edit window up it updates the edit window so so um, now when we click the edit button we will have the two screens open we'll have the edit screen and the main screen now this line right here is very important self dot edit window dot updated dot connect now updated 
is defined in the edit screen and we're able to use that obviously because we're doing self to edit window dot updated dot connect so updated equals qt core dot pi qt signal and that's of course right in the class right there um, and then we have our init which is going to initialize the edit window um, blah blah that's all the programming that's the cancel button the ok button um, and oh um the way i had the okay and cancel were added for me as a button box which is a q dialog button box which you also had to look up but um so when you do the the connect it's instead it's a okay button dot click connect self dot okay signal but the okay button equals self dot button box dot button QT GUI Q dialog button box dot okay that tells you it's okay button or the cancel button then you can do self dot okay signal and the okay signal is essentially going to close and save the values so it's just saving the data there um, then we have the self dot updated dot emit and that's very important there self dot close just closes the window but self dot updated dot emit that emits the signal back and that's the update right there pi qt signal um, and that actually allows this to connect to that emit signal and run a self dot label update which just updates the uh, information on the main screen because the edit button allows you to edit the information on the main screen there so you would hit OK and it would change these values here to the ones you set in the edit box and that's why this is important because it's able to um, connect to a signal emitted in the edit screen class right there and then change those values and then um, it closes the uh, edit box right there um, which makes you good to go so all right, and then our class error screen is literally just our little error screen. It has an OK button. That's really about it. That's just saying not admin. So.